Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today we're gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna try to find out what is the best way to sear a steak. Hey guys, I'm out here in a short sleeve t-shirt in the snow to tell you that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people. There are all kinds of topics you can explore from music to marketing to freelance and entrepreneurship. All right, I could not stand it. It's 20 degrees out here. I had to go get a coat. All the time I get people contacting me. They want to know, how do I start a catering business? How do I start a restaurant? They love barbecue, but they don't know how to get it started. There's an awesome class on Skillshare that I highly recommend for you. It's called Entrepreneurship Hustle, From Business Plan to Real Success, and it's by Michael Chernow. He's the co-founder of the Meatball Shop in New York City. It's a super informative class about how to build a brand, and most importantly, it revolves around meat. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. The first 1,000 people who click on the link in the description are going to get a free trial of a Skillshare premium membership. And if you do get an annual subscription, it's less than $10 a month, well worth every single penny you put toward it. So try it out, you got nothing to lose, and I guarantee you, you're gonna find things you can learn. All right, guys, I finally broke down and got an immersion circulator. It's not a sous vide, I was told in the comments. It's an immersion circulator. So I went and got one. I thought that the best way to do this experiment is to sous vide all of the steaks. That way, they're treated exactly the same, and it's not an issue of doneness that we're worried about. We're only looking at the sear and the flavor we can get on the sear. So we're gonna sear each of these five steaks in a different way and then examine those results at the end. Now, before we sear these steaks, I wanna talk about why a sear is so important. The first reason a sear is important is because it's going to provide a different texture to the steak, so it's not all gonna be you know, soft meat. The second and most important reason is because it's gonna to provide tons and tons of flavor. And the reason it has so much flavor is because something called the Maillard reaction takes place. It's complicated organic chemistry, but basically what you need to know is it turns brown and tastes delicious. And without a sear, you're not gonna have that reaction take place and you're just gonna have kind of a stew type of meat. And you don't want that, you want a steak, so you gotta have that sear. And we're gonna do five different ways of searing these to find out what is the best. So the five ways that we're gonna sear these steaks is number one, with a charcoal chimney with a grate on top. Number two, we're gonna use a propane grill and get the sear burner turned all the way up. Number three, we're gonna use cast iron. That's my favorite method so far that I've ever used, and I expect it to do well today, but I'm open to changing my mind if something else works better. Number four, we're gonna use a torch to try and sear the outside by putting the torch on top of the meat. Uh, then number five, we're gonna do caveman style, where I take the steak and put it directly on lit charcoal. Now, there are other ways to sear steaks, I'm sure. I've thought about a lot of different ways. Thought about even putting a steak in a forge. Thought about heating up metal till it's glowing red hot, putting a steak on that, seeing how that works. But you may ask, why am I doing these? Well, it's, uh, it's because uh, I'm working hard to put food on my family and uh, I'm the decider. All right, now it's time to go outside, light up some coals and get ready to cook some steaks. Got our chimney of coals, rocking and rolling, so it's time to put on a steak. And here it's sizzling. Nice crust. Next up, caveman style. Let's give it a shot. Directly on the coals. That's hot. Shout together throughout 
turn to 18. Each day will be sweeter as a million years go by. Got a lot, tell me Jesus, when I reach my home on high. Got a lot, tell me Jesus, when I reach my home above. Born to kneel down at his feet in heaven and thank you for his wonderful love. Wanna thank my Lord for saving my soul. Thank you for the day that he made me whole. I got a lot. Okay, looks good. When I reach my home on high. When I reach my home on high. This is my favorite method of cooking a steak with cast iron. Normally I would baste it with butter and some herbs and stuff, but to keep things as simple as possible, comparing sear to sear. I want to do just a little oil in the bottom of the pan to get the sear. I'm not worried about adding extra flavors. So adding butter on this one would be cheating if I couldn't add it on the others. On all of these, it's really important that you pat dry the steak because if you don't, that water on the surface is going to prevent the surface from heating up enough to cause the Maillard reaction because the Maillard reaction takes place at about 300 degrees and above water boils at 212 degrees. So if there's a bunch of water there, you can't get it hot enough to get the sear that's gonna produce the flavor that you want. 400, we're getting there. When it hits 500, the steak's going on. 500, so it's time to go. Looking good already. See that sear from edge to edge all over the surface? That's exactly what you're looking for. All right, I have this steak on the cool side of the grill and I'm gonna use this guy to sear it off. Now we have the old standby, the gas grill with a sear burner. One reason people often have a hard time getting a great sear on a gas grill like this is because they close the lid. When you close the lid, you're essentially turning it into an oven and you're shortening the cook time. You're making the internal temperature of that steak increase more rapidly than you would like. So I leave the lid open so that it cooks more slowly and I have more time to get a sear before the inside overcooks. I just rotated it to get better grill marks. It doesn't improve the flavor at all, but rotating it makes it look better and it gets that traditional kind of crosshatch pattern that, uh, that people like to see, even though it's not about flavor, because if you go to a steakhouse, most of the time you don't see that, or a good steakhouse, you don't see that. Instead, you see a surface that's completely browned because they're trying to get as much sear on there as possible. That's why they cook so hot. That's why they have kind of uh, specialized broilers for that purpose.
So with this experiment, I wanted to get really good results. You've seen me eat lots of stuff on camera and I'm the one who cooked them so I know which steak is which. Instead, what I wanna do is a blind taste test. So I had some people who are willing to come eat steak and give us their impressions. First up is my friend, Blake. Next up is my wife, Erica. She has a great palate. She always tastes things that I miss. And so I'm really curious to see what she thinks of these. Here's number one. How does it look? Ooh, it cuts nice. Oh, it's really soft. It looks a little burnt, okay. but it looks appetizing. It looks like that'll have a good crunch. I like this one. Does it taste really burnt? nice. Uh, no, like along the edges here, where that where that tar is, it's got a nice subtle uh, crisp or crunch to it. I like it. It tastes a little burnt. I like the taste because it reminds me of summer at the beach when people when they have those grills. I think it's actually probably charcoal grill. I would eat this for dinner, but I wouldn't order it. Number two. Number two. It's also very good. Sounds really good. Compared to a steakhouse. It doesn't have the same texture. I didn't I didn't pick up any crispiness or crunchiness. So would you order this one or no? If I didn't have to pay a lot of money for it. Number three. All right. We'll go for it. That has something to do with charcoal right off the bat, I can tell. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. -hmm. mm. mm. It's a, uh, it has, it definitely has more of a smoky flavor to it. Smoky charcoal flavor. It's good. It definitely has a different flavor than the other ones. Number four. Number four. A very even sear across the whole piece. It looks pretty much like that's the kind of sear I want. There's some parts that are darker, but this side looks really good. Mm. I really like this one. I want more of that one. You pay for that one. Yeah. Okay. Why, why do you like that one? The flavor is really good. The texture has the perfect amount of just a slight crunch when you bite into it, and it doesn't taste burned. Do you taste any off flavors? No. I like the evenness of the sear. Do you think there's more flavor from this sear? Yes. What method do you think was used to cook this one? Ah, um, um, my best guess would be the cast iron skillet. Would you pay good money for it in a steakhouse? Oh, yeah, you betcha. I can take this when I go, right? Sure. <laughs> That's the most flavorful one so far. Mm -hmm. My mouth is watering just thinking about more of it, so. <laughs> well, how do you think this one was seared? Um, cast iron. You think cast iron? Why yeah. cast iron? Because it doesn't have grill marks and it doesn't really look uneven. The surface is uniform. Okay. Last one, number five. How does it look? It looks like I'm second guessing uh, my last uh, methodology pick because this one also has a very similar even sear across the whole steak. Uniform on the top. Any so, parts look burnt? No parts look burned. Does it, does it look appealing? Yeah, it looks really appealing. Okay, well, why don't you take a bite? Hold on, I'm trying to figure out which one it is. What are the two that would have uniform? That doesn't make sense. I'm getting flavor from the seasoning that was put on the steak. Mmm. The flavor is really good. All right, what are they seasoned with? Salt and pepper. Tastes like there's more. There's some seasonings on there. It doesn't have as much crunch as the last one. Okay. So I like the texture of the other one better. But the flavor of this one is probably slightly better. Okay. So four and five, you think have the most flavor? Yeah. Which two did you like the most? I like this one and the last one the best. The numbers four and five. Yeah. And if you could only choose one of those two, you choose which one? Um, this one. But ideally, if this one has been on a little bit longer to get more of a crunch. All right, you ready to learn what they are? Yeah. So the first one was caveman style, which means you take the steak, put it directly on the coals. That okay. One was sitting on a pile of charcoal. That's the one you said tasted like summertime and grills. Oh yeah. Yeah. This one right here, number five, was cast iron. It was? It was cast iron. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. You didn't expect that? No. I mean, I thought the Why last not? one for... Because I thought that the last one was on the cast iron for sure because it was hotter. It looked a little bit more burned. Mm -hmm. So, number four was cooked with a propane torch. So really? It looked like this, just heated with a torch. I thought the first one was... Okay. First one? Yeah, I would have thought the, um, the crispiness 
of the sear along the edges of that steak would have been achieved with the propane torch. I think it's so funny that this is the cast iron one. That's your favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is the best one. Yeah. Number four, which was the one I liked most, mm -hmm. was the one that was actually with seared with a torch, which is, again, interesting. Mm -hmm. One thing that surprised me about these results was that the steaks cooked over charcoal didn't really seem to pick up a lot more flavor, or at least not a lot more good flavor. So the tasters could identify, I think this was cooked with charcoal. The one that was directly on the coals, caveman style, was a little bit burnt tasting, which it makes sense if you put something on screaming hot coals, it's easy to burn it. But I was most surprised by the results with the propane torch. I thought this may or may not work. It may produce a good sear or it could just burn the steak and you know ruin it. But instead, it was one of the two favorites in both cases. So our top two places for both tasters were four and five. That is the propane torch and the cast iron. Now I'm not surprised at all by the cast iron because I love to cook steak in cast iron. Maybe it's not the most sophisticated way to do it, but I think it produces the best flavor every time. Now, apparently I have a new way with a propane torch to try and get a great sear without having to drag out the cast iron. You guys at home should let me know how you sear a steak. So leave a comment down below, tell me how you do it, and maybe there are gonna be some methods in there that I've never heard of, but I'm willing to try. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe down below. Also turn notifications on so that you get notified every time I put out a new video. I'll see you guys next time.